We march into the blessed love of Canaan with delight. We live in all our heavy burdens here. Our lips will be our lips and free from being slaves to sin. We come into the blessed thing of life. Come into the sweet, the really water flows. In glory we be living nevermore. Go into the land, we free for the sin. In glory we be living nevermore. Our God us with the pillars of the fire and the cloud. Oh, give us grace to follow with our lives. The moment that we cross the Jordan River is at hand. We come into the blessed stream of life. Come into the stream where living water flows. In glory we be living nevermore. Go into the land where we live through the stream. In glory we be Receive this Jordan manna from above. Your precious food is always the our strength. So if the future finds us lacking, we will not despair. We come into the blessed spring of life. Come into the spring that really water flows. In glory we be living nevermore. Go into the land. We're fully for the spring. In glory we be living nevermore. Come into the spring. Come into the spring. We're living water flows. In glory we be living nevermore. Go into the land. We're fully for the spring. In glory we be living nevermore. In glory we be living. Come home again. Home.
It's been a long time since I heard that song from the, the Holy Song. What was that, that title? Our, our Children Come Home. Oh, yeah, Oh My Child Come Home. It's a really, really um, such a beautiful, beautiful um, song. And definitely, uh, I don't actually know who, who wrote that, do you know? I definitely feel it was a woman. It had a mother's heart. It had a mother's heart. Um, so, um, today's Mother's Day, and um, I want to begin, of course, by uh, wishing all the mothers in the audience a happy Mother's Day, all the mothers-to-be, all the like mothers who have cared for children who are um, not necessarily their own. I'd like to wish the mother aspect of God, God, 
a happy Mother's Day, and also our true mother of the unification movement. Happy Mother's Day. But yes, of course. But I would also like to um, give tribute this morning to my own mother, who has passed on. She rests in the Glendale Cemetery. On her tombstone, it says, love and laughter, because that's what my mother was to our family. She uh, really embraced us all and was always, always laughing and joking. Um, I want to give tribute to my mother-in-law, who passed three years ago. And all the mothers throughout history, perhaps your mother or your grandmother has already passed on, but you know, mothers, are, they've been around for a really long time. As a matter of fact, they've been around since the beginning of time, right there next to our Father God. Um, oftentimes we don't think so much, though, about the mother aspect of God. So um, there's an awful lot of mothers that have happened throughout history. So I want to give a great big round of applause for all of the mothers, past, present, and future. Yet even, so, even though the motherhood of God has existed for the same amount of time as the fatherhood of God, um, we don't know that much. We don't think so much about the mother, the aspect of mother. Um, many of the people in history that we've studied through the Bible and through, um, even, even in the divine principle, it's, uh, you know, once, once you hear, um, I, I was, first of all, you, you grew up with the idea of uh, our Heavenly Father. And then when you even look through in the divine principle, the people that we study, the courses of history are all men. Then, you know, what happened to the mother? And it's only until our true mother that we could actually begin to um, think about the motherhood of God. So, uh, you know, originally, um, Pastor Manoj had asked me to give a sermon. I, I thought it was scheduled for last week, and I was all prepared with a sermon last week, and then he asked me to uh, do the Mother Day sermon. And um, it kind of threw me. And then I started thinking, oh, now I have to talk about motherhood. I ha and, you know, there are actually there are a number of people in our movement who have really been concentrating on that. To name just a few, Dr. Andy Wilson has, um, has really done a lot thinking about the motherhood of God. Also, um, a sister from our own community, uh, Jeannie Carroll. Uh, I, I, I spoke with her. I listened to her testimony. I listened to her tape on... on uh, on, um, uh, the, you know, the internet, and I thought, oh my gosh, she should be given this, not me. She should be talking about it. And then I tried to put something together that made sense on the motherhood of God, and then I, I thought, gee, I haven't, I haven't really thought about this as deeply as people like her or Dr. Wilson. So then, as I struggled with my sermon, trying to get this thing together on, mother, on Mother's Day, I thought, oh, forget it, you know? Let me just go back to the sermon that I had, because you know what? As a mother, whatever I have to say, it's going to be something maternal. That's just the way it is. So you're getting last week's sermon. The sermon is, um, the title of the sermon is, Get Up and Try Again. So you know, one of my, um, my, one of my sons was a wrestler. Uh, he was a wrestler in high school, varsity wrestling and everything like that. But um, actually, he started wrestling when he was only seven. He was in second grade. He was only about this big, you know. Actually, it's really sweet if you if you have children who um, who have wrestled when they when they start at that age. It's it's really funny because you know they're real tiny and they wear these little singlets and they come out on the mat, you know, and they get into this starting position and then the bell rings and you see them. They get on this man. They're fighting. They're really doing their best. They give a hundred percent. They give a hundred percent trying to pin this other guy down on the mat. And you know, me standing on the, on the um, sideline with all the other mothers, and we're, you know, you're yelling to our kids, come on, get up, you could do it, go again, go again, try again. It's, it's the mother's heart, you just keep going. You know, and um, the funny thing is, when, when I would do that, I would be standing on the sidelines and I'd be yelling like that, and I'd start crying. 
I was crying, not, not because he was hurt or anything like that, but crying because it's so amazing to see your children give 100% to give everything that they have. As a matter of fact, it wasn't just my son. Whenever I saw any child who was wrestling this little things, putting in 100%, I'd be crying. Actually, I'd be embarrassed. I'd go, find a place to hide because I'm tears coming down my eyes. I don't even know this child. He's even the other team, and I'm crying because they gave 100% and to push them further. So, um, anyway, they, they really give with such sincerity. And, um, I think that this is really, a, you know, the spirit of a mother to say, get up, try again, go on, you could do it. So I'd like to share um, about that aspect of a mother's heart. It is the, the heart of, of persistence. So for the sake of clarity, I'd like to just look at the two aspects of um, of. of the heart of God, the masculine and feminine, or we might say the, the paternal, the father's heart and the mother's heart. You know, the masculine nature of God, as we know from the divine principle, is a kind of subjectivity, a subjective nature. And it can be perceived in the absolute, that is, what is the goal? What is the result we're going for? You know, it's focused on the ideal itself. Now, the feminine nature, on the other hand, is kind of an objective nature, and it can be perceived more in the yielding or the changing or the adjusting to that goal. How do we get to the goal? The feminine focus is on the process, the nurturing towards fulfillment. So I want to clarify that neither one of these are right or wrong. They simply are. And they're equally correct. They're equally valuable. Even better is when the two work in conjunction with one another in tandem. We have a goal and we process towards it. As a matter of fact, I remember, um, I remember a real long time ago, so I was at Belvedere, it must have been the early 70s, and um, there was a brother who was working over at East Garden and she, he pointed out that um, he had been there when one of the children had done something wrong. And father yelled at this child, whatever it was that he did, it was incorrect. And interestingly, he said, mother got behind the child and held him, held him in place so that father could, you know, that he could stand strong while father, um, you know, yelled. <laughs> You know, gave him correction. But I, I thought that really is, um, that is really the cooperation of mother and father. So um, I thought that this concept of, of uh, the masculine parent and the feminine parent, keeping that in mind that since um, our true father passed on, since Reverend Moon passed on this uh, three years ago, um, we see that True Mother is leading our movement, but in quite a different way. I was reminded of the way that Father used to always say to us, especially towards the end of his life, I've given you everything. I've said it all already. I've given you the tools to do the job, to bring about the restoration of, of the world. Mother, on the other hand, is not talking about that, but rather she is standing um, on the side and encouraging each one of us to do our responsibility. She's standing behind us or on the sidelines and she's calling to us, get up, try again, go again, you can do it. That is the spirit of motherhood that I really am concentrated on. That um, Father gave us the vision, he gave us the goal, and that being to become tribal messiahs, to, to live out the true family, and to bring about the true family, one family under God. And Mother is there to help us through the experience to do our very best. And like a mother who is watching her child in the wrestling ring, she stands at the side yelling, get up, go again. 
So I, I'd like to, um, you know, always when I give a sermon, I like to tell a story, right? I, I really believe in stories. My, like Jesus, Jesus had parables. He told stories that helped us to understand something about life. And uh, I, wanna, I wanna give my parable today. It's the parable of the drain. Okay, the parable of the drain. Um, in my house, I could say this because my husband's not here. In my house, I, I, I do kind of um, the hands-on things. Um, when, the, when the dishwasher breaks, um, I figure out how to fix it. That's all I do. I, I go to the YouTube, I put in, you know, fixing a dishwasher, and then I, I follow the instructions. So I, um, my dishwasher broke. I hate doing dishes. I hate, I've said it before, standing here, I hate doing dishes. My dishwasher's important, my dishwasher broke. So um, I looked up on YouTube how to fix a dishwasher, and it said to check these things, and, and I did it all. But you know what? My dishwasher still wasn't draining. So I called in a service man, and the service man came in, and he did this, and he did that, and he did this, and he did that, and then he said to me, it's fixed. So, you know, he left. I ran my dishwasher, and it didn't drain. So I called the man back, and you know, it takes two weeks for them to come. It's not like, a, like it happens like this. Two weeks later, the man, and um, he does this, and he does that, and he does this, and he does that, and he, he says, it's fixed, and he leaves. And then I try to run the dishwasher, and it still doesn't work. You know, so I did this for six months. I, I called the man seven times, and somebody came and fixed the dishwasher, said it's fixed, and when I ran the dishwasher, it doesn't drain. So finally I got aggravated, and I called the company, and I said, listen, six months, I'm waiting for my dishwasher to get fixed. I want a new dishwasher. They said, that's reasonable. They brought me a new dishwasher. The man came, and he put it in, and then he left, and I ran the dishwasher, and what would you guess? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. And I, I, I can't, th what, what am I going to do? This is a new dishwasher. Something is obviously wrong. Something is clogged in the system somewhere. So I did the same thing again. I pulled this out. I even opened up all the drains. I put it back together again. And I'm just looking at the thing, wondering what the, and then all of a sudden I noticed, because I'd gone through every pipe that there was, every screen, every filter that there was, there's a little pipe, a little tube, about maybe three inches long and about a half inch wide that I hadn't looked in. And I looked there and lo and behold, a screw got caught up and there must have come up through. A little screw got in there and all the junk got in there. And because it was clogged, the whole system didn't work. Actually, my dishwasher was good. Actually, the dishwasher that I got rid of was good. But there was this little problem. So. Why do I tell you this story, this long story? Um, the reason I'm telling is because I, as, as, a, as a parable, in this story, the inoperable dishwasher really re represents the unfulfillment of our ideals, those ideals that haven't been fulfilled yet. And the repetition of the man coming to do, the repair man coming, it's really like the efforts that we make to try to change ourselves or try to change our situation or change our family, change the world. Over and over again, we keep trying different things. Even the fact that we got a new dishwasher, it's sort of like the way that we, we receive the blessing. We receive God's forgiveness. We receive a new life, but still, we fall back into our old ways. The clog is still there, no matter what. So we need to really continue to aggressively identify the problem so that we can really get rid of it for good. Some people even get tired and they say, I'm giving up, I'm gonna stop trying. But I'm here to say today, in a heart of a mother, that the sure way not to find the solution is to stop trying. We need to get up, we need to try again, keep going, we can do it. You know, I really struggled, I really struggled with my sermon, um, getting it together, trying to speak about, um, 
about something I couldn't understand. Maybe my message that I'm giving today is too short. Maybe it's too simple. I'm grateful that David Eaton gave a, an announcement because I have a short sermon. He took my time. Um, maybe the message isn't for you. My hope is that there's somebody here who does need to need, need to know that we have to persevere. And I'm just compelled today to, as a mother, encourage everybody, as members, to persevere. Maybe you might be going through a difficulty in your own life. Maybe a difficulty in your marriage. Maybe a difficulty with your children. Maybe a difficulty with your parents, depending on who you are. Maybe you're having a difficulty to fulfill some real dream that you've had all your life and you want to see it come to fruition. Maybe you're tired. You're tired of working. You're tired of going to school. So the message might not be for you, but for those people who are struggling with something, I only want to encourage you to keep going. Because that's what mothers do. We encourage. We persist. That's what our mother God is continuing to do. God isn't counting our failures. God is only concerned that we keep on trying. God is standing on the sideline and yelling, get up, try again, go on, you can do it. She, God, cries when she sees the efforts that we make. She sees, she forgives our mistakes, as we read in 1 Peter this morning. Keep loving because love conquers a myriad of sins. On this Mother's Day, I want to ask the question of you. What makes a mother mother? It's our children. And what makes the mother happiest? It's when we see our children happy. I know that so it sounds kind of silly, but you know, for me, when I see my children smile, there, there's nothing that affects me more than to see them smile. I feel happy from the inside out. I was thinking, Ronnie must, when you know, she's watching her daughter sing, just from the inside out. Actually, that crying thing that I did, I used to go all the time to these parent conferences. Maybe you've done the same thing. You go to the parents' conference and you see your kids sing or do something, and there you are sitting in the audience with tears coming down. It's just, oh. <laughs> it's, it's just what we do. That's what mothers do. That's what you're happy about. That's what mothers do. And then I think to myself, what does the mother aspect of God do? What makes the mother aspect of God really happy. What makes God happy? It's to see her children happy. In the reading today, we've read about the nature of God. I'm going to read a, a section at a time. It says, a family should consist of parents, a husband and wife and children. Only then can there be a foundation for happiness. So this is what God is trying to personally accomplish to see an ideal of God's love. This is God's goal, to see God's family as one. God's purpose is seeking to dwell with humanity as his or her own happiness. God's venturing forth to find a foundation for happiness, fulfilling the ideal. It can't take place except apart from and uh, to, can't take place apart from um, human interaction. So what makes God happy? That's, that's what makes God happy, is to see us happy, us fulfilling our ideals. So that point of connection can be found only through the relationship with us. And just as we feel happy when everything that we need for our emotional well-being is present in our family, so God likewise longs to feel happy in such a setting. God's emotional well-being is intrinsically connected to our success. So on Mother's Day, I encourage you 
to keep on trying. The only way that God will be happy, our mother God will be happy, is to see us happy. And the only way that we're going to be happy is we keep on trying to become the very best that we can, keep on trying to create the family that God has really um, dreamed of. So um, we need to continue to focus on that effort to bring about the establishment of God's kingdom on earth. Let us make God happy. We'll do it by getting up, trying again, going on, because in fact, we can do it. Thank you.